I want to show you how to use the Revit sketch lines tool, which is pretty simple. For those of you who are familiar, there is a way for us to get those conceptual looking sketches even in the Revit software. So I'm gonna start here in a project that I've worked on for a community center and early on in the project, it was very important. I wanted to be able to show that the concept was still very preliminary. So I'm just going to come in and down here at the bottom of our screen, we're gonna go ahead and I, I wanna do two things here. I wanna show you how we do this. So I'm gonna take my 3D axon and I'm gonna duplicate it so that I have that view can be a view unto itself that I'll use for different, maybe I'll put it on a sheet and use at certain times and not use at others, we'll see. But if we just come down here to our visual styles and click on here, this is the graphic display options I wanna click on. And under the graphic display options, you'll see there's actually a sketch lines and I just wanna check that here for the view. And when I check that and click apply, you'll see I have it on set on zero. So originally you won't see anything. You'll see many times I like to keep this graphic display options menu open and just click apply so that I can see just the effect. But the jitter option is the first one I wanna go over. That's going to create just how sketchy of a line you get. So let's click apply here. And that gives us a scale bar of like zero to 10. And so now you can see how our waves start to become lines start to become wavy um, of the geometry and i'll show you let's go all the way up to 10 and take a look at that too so as i click apply you'll see just how wavy the line work will start to get it, it makes the sketch just a little bit more rougher um in my opinion it, you know you've kind of gone over the lines multiple times and so forth and i want to also move the extension so the extension is controlling and i'm just going to put in go halfway up to about five and click apply here now the extension is how far past the intersection of your where your points come together uh, you know i know that you'll start to see the sketch line work let me zoom in a little bit and i'll have to click apply to do that but when i zoom in on my line work you'll start to see that the lines actually continue past the intersection point and that's what that extension tool is. So I'm going to modify that a little bit more. Let's just to exaggerate the use of this tool. If I come back in, let's move that extension all the way up to 10 and click apply. So this is about the amount of extension that you're going to get here. And let me zoom out, just show you what we have here. You'll see the sketch starts to become imperfected, which is sometimes, like I said, the character you may be going for early on in the project. So I'm going to just zoom out and show you, hey, this is this is pretty much the look that you're gonna get. And you can play with that and refine that. Let's take a look at one other view because I think that this is a very powerful tool to use, uh, especially in some of your perspective views. So let me just find a perspective view that I wanna use for this. Okay, so here's a perspective view. And let's go ahead and repeat those same steps. So if we come back under here under our visualization, you'll see the graphic display options. And under sketch lines, we'll have to enable sketch lines. So remembering each one of your views will need to individually be controlled unless you use a view template. And we'll get to that in a future video. But for now, I just wanna go over this feature for you. So I'm going to turn up the jitter and my extension roughly to five. And let's click apply here on both of these. So now you can see my sketch entrance. It appears to be more sketchy at this point. And there's one other thing I wanna show you because I think it really enhances these sketches. So if we come back into that graphic display option, I like to also check even instead of the cast shadow. The cast shadow, maybe you wanna use, maybe you don't. But I like to use this show ambient shadows. And let's uncheck cast shadows just so you can see how this looks on its own. And I'm gonna get this menu out of the way just so you can get a sense of, you see how it kinda of gives a very softened tone to even the line work and so forth. And you you can combine and add in you know your 
also the shadows based on where your building sits in the landscape. And you can see these two combined together. So I think it has the opportunity to give you a very powerful uh, final graphic look here. So definitely consider using the sketch line options. I like to use it early on, as I mentioned at the beginning versus at the end when I tend to pr produce more refined sketches. So I'll just show you uh, in the very end, this is kind of where things were with the, with the sketch line with some of the visualization in the very end. And just to compare things and show you, hey, that wasn't, these are some of the exterior renderings produced for this project. But you're able to see how, hey, these are refined renderings that I think very well communicate. If you're a little bit further along in the process, they have the tendency to communicate that, hey, the, even the thoughts, the preliminary design thinking has been developed versus this more conceptual level. So maybe I'll show you just very quickly. I do have that because this is the same project Let's, let's just see how this looks on a very similar perspective. And you get the sense of, hey, from, from one, and I can type in five as well here. And just click apply to both of these. And once again, I'll check that amb ambient shadow here. Casting shadows for this particular interior perspective is just going to all be in shadow. But you can see here, take a look at just how this perspective is enhanced. So the elements are still there, but it looks very different than what you see here. <laughs> I mean, take a look at that. There's a major difference. And I think depending on where you may even be in the development of the engineering systems and so forth, you might want to consider backing off the level of detail, but showing something that gives you a sketch quality. Your clients may appreciate this sort of thinking. Um, and it, this even appreciate the graphic depending on where the project is in the process. Thanks for watching this YouTube video. Remember, hey guys, you got to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We're going to talk about some things surrounding Revit, get into the tutorial, but also want to share you with some of the things I've experienced as well as my thoughts. And if you have any comments or anything to add to it, shoot a comment to me put that in the comment box below you'll see that there will from time to time we're going to start to add some links in the description box but hey guys make sure you subscribe to the smart architect youtube channel thanks again for watching